George, would you like to read to us? I would, yes. <laughs> it's a story that uh, we've touched on. We know it's, uh, it's from Mark 11, 1 to 11. The Triumphal Entry. Now, when they came near Jerusalem to Bethage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent out two of his disciples, and he said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it. And immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found the colt tied by the door outside on the street, and they loosed it. And some of those who stood there said to them, what are you doing? loosing the colt. So they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their garments on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple. So when he had looked around at all things, as the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Mm. Amen. <laughs> Father, we just thank you for your word, and we ask you this we just these brief moments, look into it, that you would indeed inspire us and encourage us as we seek your word for our lives we ask it in jesus name amen it's the beginning of uh, in a lot of churches would be they would call uh, the week which leads up to easter holy week but i want, wanted us just to look at jesus riding on a donkey into jerusalem you know, Jesus didn't do anything that it wasn't foretold in the scriptures. You realize that, that whatever Jesus did somewhere in the scriptures, in the Old Testament, it's always ready been forfeit, fulfilled that it was going to happen. And if you look at the, in uh, Zechariah uh, 9, 9, it says, Rejoice greatly, O people O Zion. Shout with triumph. O people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous, amen, and victorious. Yet he is, he is humbly riding on a donkey, even a donkey's coat. You know, I can picture this great crowd of people beginning to worship God, can't you? Can you imagine the, the noise and the attraction it took to see all these people coming to see Jesus riding on a donkey? You know, he could have rode on a horse, but he took the, four, the, the donkey or even the coat of a donkey because it brought him down to the people. It was an everyday animal. He didn't ride with a, a swagger. He rode with victoriousness in his, in, his, in his being. He knew who he was. He was level with the people. 
You imagine being on a horse, he would have been probably above the people. But he wanted to be part of the people, just as he wants to be part of us even today. And so as he rode into Jerusalem, I want you to picture those people coming out in throngs. As it said, putting branches, and as John says, it was palm branches uh, in the road as this donkey went up through into Jerusalem. And, and as uh, Linda spoke on just now, that these people were ecstatic to see Jesus coming in to Jerusalem. And the excitement and the noise was probably even deafening as they were shouting and probably singing Hosanna to the highest. And, you know, isn't it good to be in amongst people who are, are shouting and, and proclaiming Jesus? But, you know, crowds change, don't they, as, as Linda reminded us. And before long, this same crowd with the uh, prompting of other people, changed their minds and started to condemn him. And, you know, you know the story very well that, you know, when um, a Pilate came and, and said, who will we give you? And they shouted, Barabbas. And they said, what do you, they said, kill him, crucify him. And it was probably some of these same people that were the people who were welcoming him in, in to the city. And, you know, it reminded me recently, as you see these crowds of people uh, in Bristol and all around, all of a sudden it takes just a few people to cause a riot and cause people to change their mind. Because so often, as Linda said, we're easily led by the crowd around us and, and all, all of a sudden we're not uh, as, as um, our, our enthusiasm wanes and uh, as Linda said pray that, that uh, we will never be in that position that our, our enthusiasm wanes for what God has done and is going to do for us so let's remind ourselves but I, I just wanted to look at the start of this uh, this story that uh, George read to us, you know, it's easy to miss some of the simple things that we might take for granted, but mean so much what God does. It's easy to miss out what God's trying to do and trying to say and trying to show us because we just bypass it. And I want us just to look at four things that came before Jesus rode in Jerusalem. And as we look, and we look in uh, verse, uh, well, we took uh, verse two when Jesus told them to go and enter into the, the town and see, find this donkey that was, or this coat that was tied up, that never been ridden, and to bring it to him. And the two disciples, we, we were read, found this coat standing in the street where Jesus said it was going to be. And I thought, well, that, that's a, a bit of a miracle because there we are, Jesus knew that that coat was there. I mean, you might argue that he'd been there before. I don't know. But he knew that the donkey was there. And then you read this story as we read on to it that we find that uh, these disciples were challenged. And Jesus knew that they would be challenged because Jesus had that insight to know. And as they were challenged, Jesus' words changed the situation. Do you ever notice that? It wasn't anything the disciples said. It's what they said, Jesus said. Not what they said, not what they thought, it's what Jesus had told them to say. And I thought, wow, what authority is in the name of Jesus? What authority? Because 
they let them take the donkey, it said, or the coat, this young donkey. And as you picture this donkey being led back to Jesus, and probably the disciples were thinking, wow, that was a, you know, how did that happen? You know, we've, we've gone into a village, we've take, found a donkey and we've taken it, just as Jesus said, and they brought it back to Jesus. Now, I don't know what the discussion was because it didn't tell us. But I can imagine the disciples thinking, mm, we've got something that's never been rid before, rode before, rode before. What are we going to do? And whether it was Jesus who told them or whether they did it of their own accord, we don't honestly know, but they put some coats over the donkey, this young donkey. And then it says Jesus sat on this donkey that has never been rid before. Now, I personally don't like horses. Um, I try and steer clear of them. My daughter-in-law has got a horse and um, I get very nervous when I get near to it. I haven't been near it for years, but years ago I used to go near to it and I used to think, mm, I don't know. Probably chill said because you got bitten when I was uh, at the cheese show years ago uh, when I was about eight or nine and probably that's what put me off horses. I don't know. But I know they are very unstable animals. And they can very easily do what they want to do, bolt and jump and and kick out and do whatever they want. And I presume, and I, I imagine the donkey can be very much the same especially one that hasn't never been rode before. And before long, this donkey would have been out of control. But when Jesus sat on that donkey, the donkey was perfectly calm. Do you realize that? This donkey was perfectly calm. Why? Because he knows the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is on his back. He knows. And because of that, he's calm. Donkeys put their trust in their owners. And he felt that trust of knowing that Jesus was a person who was going to look after him. Wasn't going to bring him to harm, but was going to look after him and to keep him safe no matter what was in head of him. And, you know, that reminded us, that's how we need to be, isn't it? That knowing that we put our trust in Jesus, no matter what is ahead, whether it's good or whether it's bad, whatever it is, that we know that Jesus is in control. And as we put our trust in him, it finds it easier to do what we have to do. And the donkey just, I can imagine, just probably shook his back a bit and just stood there. And then he would start to be led into those streets towards Jerusalem. And as he was being led there, all of a sudden the crowd appears. And I was watching the police horses on television the other day. They were very, very calm in the situation where people were shouting and throwing stuff in front of them. They stayed calm, but they didn't do that just at that particular time. It took months and months of training to get those horses into a position where they were confident. But this donkey had never been in a situation like that. But there was this donkey knowing full well with these people shouting and the, the branches going in front of him. He was totally at ease. And, you know, it reminded me of uh, the Psalm 23. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff will comfort me. This is the psalmist talking about God. And this donkey was perfectly, perfectly at ease going through this crowd because he knew that God, or Jesus, was with him. And he knew that whatever happened, he was there with him, beside him, whatever he was going to do. And I thought, wow, that's exciting, isn't it? Something that probably we wouldn't even think about normally. But it's the simple things, quite often the small things, that make a big impression on our lives when we think about what God's doing. And as I, I read the story, and I read it in all the Gospels, it's in every Gospel, Luke said this, that the Pharisees, which was uh, the religious people at that time, came to Jesus, and it says, but some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, teacher, which you're talking to Jesus, Rebuke the followers for singing these things. And Jesus said, if they kept quiet, even the stones along the road would burst out cheering. Even the stones. And I thought, wow. That's an example to us, even it. God's given us the privilege of worshipping him and giving him glory, but if we don't do it, well, he'll get the stones to do it. And I want to be in a position that we're worshipping God and not having to have the stones come and do it. Not Jill or Jill's dad, but <laughs> the stones on the road would call out to give God glory and honour and praise. And, you know, we've got that privilege ourselves of being able to give him the glory, all the glory, all the honour and all the praise. Amen and amen and amen. So let's give him the glory, the honour and the praise this week because he is righteous and triumphant. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. Amen. So let's lift him right now. Give him that glory. Give him that praise. Give him that honor. Because he is who he is. So Lord, we just want to thank you. That you're interested in the small things as well as the big things the insignificant things as well as the great things and help us to give you the praise and the honour for the small things as well as the big things for our every day that we do and we stay we give you glory we give you praise and we give you honour for the big things that we see and we're involved in we give you the glory and we give you the praise and we give you the honor. And we thank you, Lord, that you have chosen a people like us to be your mouthpiece in this time in which we live. So, Lord, we ask you to use us to your glory and to your honor and to your praise because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. <laughs>